Hello everyone and welcome to Rob's video blog. Now I hate to bring up an old topic because it's already been talked about, but it just like it did it just they just gave more fuel to the fire. So I was I was in the gym uh, the other day crushing it and uh, listening to Pandora and an ad comes on and it's for Chrysler. I forget what crap car they were trying to sell, but they were comparing it to the Toyota Camry. And the only comparison that they actually made was, oh, the Chrysler, whatever the heck it was, has active backup grid lines, which I guess means like, you know, when you turn, like the grid lines like turn with you and shows you like where you're going. And it said the Toyota Camry has static grid lines. So there, you should buy a Chrysler. It's like, holy God, dude, the best that you can do against like the world's best selling car ever, the Toyota Camry, is the fact that your backup grid lines do this when you turn or maybe it beeps when you get close to something. I mean, you gotta come with a little bit more than that to try and outsell the Toyota Camry. I mean, the the I feel like Chrysler should just, they should just advertise but not compare themselves to other brands because when you do a side-by-side -side comparison, it, it's kind of sad, it's pretty sad. Um, and this, this, one, this one too, and I'm not trying to hate on American manufacturing or American uh, car companies, but God, we're just, they're, they're, they're adver I don't know if it's just their advertising, their cars, it's just, they're, they're, it's bad. It's bad. Uh, I saw a, uh, you know, there's these commercials, you've probably seen them, uh, there are a lot of them running on primetime television, but there's like these commercials for uh, Chevy where they have like a bunch of people in like this uh, conference room and they're asking them and they take all like, you know, the emblems for like Chevy and BMW and Jaguar and like all these companies, Mercedes, and they're like, rank these, you know, in, in order of like luxury. And of course, people, you know, rank the good cars and the expensive cars up top and they put uh, Chevy down at the bottom. And then they tell them like some stupid feature, like, uh, let's see, the guy was explaining, oh, look at this, like, there's this new feature where your car will send you an email and give you a status update of like the level of oil, like your brakes, like all this like cool stuff, all pretty much all the diagnostics that come from your computer, your car's computer will be like emailed to you. And now which car manufacturer do you think has this? And everybody was like, oh yeah, it's the high end one. So, oh my God, it turns out to be Chevy. Again, I don't know where they're doing their market research, but how many freaking people when they buy their car are like, oh man, if, only my car could email me the computer codes. Uh, my life would be, it would just be so much better if I knew the status of my car when I, if, if my car could email me its status. Number one, if you're buying an expensive car, all cars are expensive now, but number one, if you're buying a car, I don't need to really know the status. The car should just go. I should really just be putting gas in it and changing the oil and occasionally got to change the brakes and new tires. Like that's it. I don't want to know all the status of the transmission fluid of this or that of all the crap on the computer. I don't need an email from my car to tell me that. And again, you're trying to convince people to not buy these other vehicles and, and instead buy a Chevy. And that's the best you can come with. Our computer's now going to send you an email. <sighs> I saw another commercial, same, same, same sort of advertising scheme, um, but they said, which one of these car manufacturers do you think is the first to implement you know, 4G LTE Wi-Fi inside the car? And it's like, oh, it's Chevy. Well, great, again, you're driving the car. Everybody has cell phones that already have 4G LTE connectivity. What the hell do I need Wi-Fi inside my vehicle for? Most people have iPads or Kindles or, or cell phones or whatever that they give to their kids that already have internet connectivity. This is not a great, awesome feature. I mean, listen, if I had two cars and they were identical and one of them had 4G LTE Wi-Fi in it, which one do you buy? Of course, you would buy that one. But that's not what, that's not what we're doing. That's not like the case they're making. The case they're making is like, oh, Chevy is just as luxurious. And in fact, it has more features than Mercedes Benz and BMW and all this crap. It's like, again, I don't know why they're trying to make the comparison. You are not going to get people who buy and lease Mercedes Benz, Jaguars, BMWs to even get inside a Chevy. No amount of marketing is going to do that. So I don't know why they're running these ads. These are like marginal, kind of clowny, gimmicky features for their cars. And I, I, I just, I, I, I just, I, it just blows my mind. I really don't understand it. I get it. They're trying to tell you like, Chevy's not as crappy as it used to be. We're coming up with like this new innovative stuff. That's fine. But the, the, the advertising campaign that they're launching, I don't know who they freaking hired, but it's awful. So those are just, uh, that, that's, that's the first thing that I want to talk about. And that was an old revisit. New thing, waffles. I know I talked about, and this kind of links into my previous one about um, 
real maple syrup, but uh, waffles. I am awesome at making waffles. I make waffles every weekend. Um, just a couple tips on making waffles. And I don't make like homemade batter. I buy the uh, like the pre-made, just kind of the pre-made uh, batter. Uh, I think it's Aunt Jemima. Um, what, two things that I would say is the box says to use oil. Replace the oil with butter. So if it says like a third a cup of oil, use the appropriate amount of butter. Taste way better. That's number one. Number two, um, I very often add a little bit more water than they tell me, than, than the box recommends, and here's why. Um, if you use the, the amount of water the box tells you, your uh, batter is very thick. And when you have your waffle iron open and you're trying to pour the batter in there, you really got to get it as even as possible. Otherwise, you get thick spots, you get thin spots, and it doesn't cook evenly. And then you get a really fluffy, light, crispy spot, and then you get a really dense spot. So you want to get it as uh, evenly distributed as possible. And you have to do it quickly because you can't just like you know sit there like this because as it goes on the uh, as it goes on the griddle, it's cooking the bottom. So you got to get it in there as as quick as you can. So by adding a little bit more water and making it thin and runny, don't be shy of making it very runny. Uh, you can pour it in there and it, it just automatically oozes into all the holes um, pr pretty perfectly. The second uh, and the third thing that I've learned is that when you, f when you put the top of the waffle iron like that and you flip it over, um, a lot of waffle irons have like this thing where you can like lock the lid in place. Do not lock the lid in place. What happens when you lock the lid in place is two things. One, if you overfilled it, the, the batter wants to rise like this. If you lock it in place, it ends up trying to rise and it can't, it squirts out the sides and makes a mess. That's number one. And number two is also when you lock the lid in place, when the waffle tries to rise like that, the lid is holding it down and that's when you get a very dense, heavy waffle. You don't get that light, crispy, airy waffle. So replace the oil with butter, use a little bit more water, get a nice, thin, runny batter. Make sure it's evenly distributed, and when you flip it over, don't lock the handle in place. Let that top that, let that top handle float if it has to. Um, and one other thing is a little bit of vanilla extract, and it is delicious. And like I said in my last blog, use the maple syrup, real maple syrup. It's totally worth it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again next time.